Have you ever wondered why the news plays the same five stories again and again? Let me give you a little hint. Brainwashing and repetition is the most basic form of brainwashing. Join me as we look at the news cycle and talk about why the mainstream media is so gutless and afraid to report the truth. What's up? Happy Monday. Welcome to Trouble Minds News. I'm your host, Michael Strange, and this is the show where the conspiracy is the news. Yep, that's right. You heard it right. You heard it straight from the horse's mouth. And in this case, that horse is Michael Strange, of course, of course. And, well, uh, what we do on this show is just talk about the news cycles, just talk about, well, um, the, the conspiracy that is the news, like I said. It's um, the misinformation, propaganda, disinformation, uh, flat out lies and spin and all the rest of this. And uh, with not just that type of stuff going on, there's uh, some some actual real news happening out there. If you would, be, if you would actually believe that, uh, you know, regardless, um, they say that we live in a political world, right? Uh, I reject it entirely. Uh, everything doesn't have to be some bullshit political narrative. I think that uh, it can be uh, news as news is, and you know, uh, maybe not trust the science entirely, like it's some sort of a techno cult. But instead, how about trust the science in terms of uh, what new scientific discoveries are happening on a daily basis? Because, well, that's the way science works. <laughs> It's not about trusting or not trusting. It's about validating. That's what science is about. That's what it's always been about. And so, well, uh, there you go. The difference between real and politics. And uh, there you go. Uh, don't live in a political world. <laughs> don't do it. I do not recommend it. It's uh, it's the, let's say, um, probably the, the fast track to strife in your life. There you go. Of course, of course. And no one can talk to a horse, of course. Let's go. Uh, we got uh, the news. Before we get to the news, though, real quick, uh, we got a thing, a little thing it's called transparency uh, propagandists, breathless propagandists won't let you interrupt them because if, if you do, uh, they, they can't they use every single little tiny moment uh, of, uh, of right, uh, the, the time given them to uh, propagandize. They don't, they don't want you to call and interrupt them. How dare you, right? So it's not allowed, right? Try and call Sean Hannity or Don Lemon as they breathlessly huff out the propaganda. Uh, it's, you can't do it. You can't get through. They won't let you do it. Well, you can interrupt me because this isn't propaganda. If I don't get to a news story today, well, and you call, we'll get to the news story next time because it's really not that big a deal. Uh, if you want to be part of the show, if you show feedback, all the rest of this, 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. Click the Discord link at TroubleMinds.org. We'll put you on the show. It's as simple as that. And uh, watching all the chat and, and on Twitch, I see you guys there. What's happening? Happy Monday to uh, the crew out there, to the fam. I see you. I see you out there. Um, in light of the weekend and uh, the, the, uh, the amount of uh, fun I like to make, of myself let's begin here shall we let's start with this oops um this is from the next web and now we're talking right now we're actually talking this is this is this is what it's all about uh if, if we can actually uh, look i'm all in if ai can be used to do amazing things and the headline here is new deep learning technique paves path to pizza making robots <laughs> now we're hey, hey now we're talking right now we're in business uh there we go uh, for humans working with a deformable objects is not significantly more difficult than handling rigid objects we learn naturally to shape them fold them and manipulate them in different ways and still recognize them but for robots and artificial intelligence systems manipulating deformable objects presents a huge challenge consider the series of steps that a robot must take to shape a ball of dough into pizza crusts it must keep track of the dough as it changes shape, and at the same time, it must choose the right tool for each step of the work. These are challenging tasks for current AI systems, which are more stable in handling rigid body objects, which have more predictable states. 
Now, dun dun dun, a deep learning technique developed by researchers at MIT, Carnegie Mellon University, and the University of California, San Diego, shows a promise to make robotic systems more stable in handling deformable objects. Called diff skill, D I F F skill, as it sounds, the technique uses deep neural networks to learn simple skills and a planning module for combining the skills to solve tasks that require multiple steps and tools. <laughs> yes, I heard pizza. That's right. Did somebody say pizza? I said pizza. Uh, here we go. If an AI system wants to handle an object, it has to be able to detect and define its state and predict how it will look in the future. This is a problem that has been largely solved for rigid objects. With a good set of training examples, a deep neural network will be able to detect a rigid object from different angles. However, when it comes to deformable objects, the space of possible states becomes much more complicated. Quote, for rigid objects, we can describe its state with six numbers, three numbers for its X, Y, Z coordinates, and another three numbers for its orientation. Zing Yu Lin, a PhD student at CMU and lead author of the Diff Scale paper, told Tech Talks. Quote, however, deformable bodies such as the dough of fabrics, uh, dough or fabrics, have infinite degrees of freedom them, making it much more difficult to describe their states precisely. Furthermore, the ways they deform are also harder to model in a mathematical way compared to rigid bodies. And uh, there you go. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Pizza. It's all about pizza. I'm telling you, we had the uh, the Cthulhu pizza conspiracy over the weekend on the Discord. And that's a fantastic reason for you to join the Discord, because if you have not, you missed the Cthulhu pizza conspiracy. And well... Mm-hmm. I'm not going to fill you in. That's an inside joke you need to go uh, follow up on in the Discord, troubleminds.org. Click the Discord link. But I thought it was fantastic that, hey, you know, I'm always bagging on uh, AI and all the rest of this. It's like, oh, they're, they're, they're coming for us. Well, as long as they bring pizza, I'm totally happy with that. 702-957-1037. What do you think? Love to hear your thoughts. Click the Discord link, troubleminds.org. Let's keep on trucking, shall we? Let's go to this. Did I link that one? I don't think I linked the one. Let's link the one, and then we'll go to the next one. Uh, Here we go. Uh, Pizza and AI. Deep learning pizza. Oh, hell yeah. (laughs) Oh, hell yeah. All right, here we go. Uh, We're going to do, we're going to go to Salon. Uh, Salon gets so many things wrong. They're they're a hot mess, but at least we'll, uh, we'll talk about this in the, in the, the meantime because uh, it seems fine uh, the, the headline chimpanzees have their own language and scientists just learned how they put words together the discovery of a chimp group's 390 word language has profound implications for the evolution of human speech uh oh <laughs> what's up Becky I see there uh, few animals appear to be able to communicate with a range as complex and intricate as humans uh, excuse me <clears throat> Choking down some food here as I speak uh, from, from 10 minutes ago. Those language skills may exist in a limited capacity in our nearest evolutionary neighbors, the great apes, many of whom have been trained to communicate via sign language by human researchers. Yet, while sign language is communicated physically, researchers did not believe that great apes possess their own comparable, complex spoken language. Uh, until now, that is. A new study reveals that chimpanzees, or at least a group of 46 chimpanzees, at Thai National Park in the African county of Côte d'Ivoire, the Ivory Coast, I believe that is, in French, are capable of complex vocalizations far beyond uh, what more pessimistic scientists thought was possible. Their words were not like human phonetic words, but a combination of chimpanzee sounds, which generally sound a bit like grunts and chirps to human ears. And the size of the chimp dictionary? Almost four hundred words. Uh oh. Uh oh. They said three hundred and ninety. Chimpanzees produced three hundred and ninety unique vocal sequences, explained the scientists who published their research in the journal Communications Biology. Uh, most vocal units emitted singly were also emitted in two unit sequence, sequences, which in turn were embedded into three unit sequence, sequences. I can't say it. They call them bigrams and trigrams. 
for context, the average human uh, 20-year-old English speaker shows an estimated 42,000 words, or knows an estimated 42,000 words, according to Science Magazine. The, the, that's, a, that's your average 20-year-old. Um, <clears throat> hopefully, they don't stop, uh, stop learning there. Uh, the scientists suggest that the way the vocal sequences were arranged suggests that they could come up with new words, too. Quote, from a purely structural perspective, the capacity to organize single units into structured sequences offers a versatile system potentially suitable for expansive meaning generation. Uh, further research must show to what extent these structural sequences signal predictable meanings. And chim- chimpanzees evidently have a ver- very malleable vocal cords, researchers say. So uh, there it is. Well, <laughs> in case you ever wondered, uh, well, now you know. Uh, they, they, they've, de- they've detected three, a 390 word language in chimpanzees. And we, we all know, right, Coco, the was it Coco the gorilla? Coco the I don't, I don't remember what it was. Maybe a chimpanzee, right? The sign language and all that stuff. The Jane Goodall and all. You know, I mean that that's that's that was impressive, incredibly impressive, right? Communication, interspecies communication, in a direct way, right? The learning words and all the rest of that. But I mean, uh, now we're talking like not just sign language, but vocal language, and uh, suddenly. Um, <laughs> uh, it means that uh, if they scream uh, to come get you, well, uh, maybe they're screaming to come get you. So uh, not to uh, not to give you any more nightmares about the human Z's. But, uh, well, there we are. 702-957-1037. Click the Discord link, troubledminds.org, and we'll put you on the show. It's as easy as that. Hope everybody's doing well. Happy Monday. Remember, Monday doesn't suck. It's your job that sucks. And uh, there we go. Let's see. What do we got? So let's uh, smash this thing. Do the thing and we'll uh, say hi over here there we go there we go all right all right so that's what we're doing uh everything could be language just need to learn it maybe space the universe and space sounds as a language Uh oh now we're talking now we're in business speaking of language well ha, uh what good is language if it gets censored let's go to this uh cnet reports yep Microsoft's Bing applied to China's political censorship to some North American searches, report says. Uh oh. <laughs> that's, uh, that's Microsoft, right? That's uh, Microsoft of uh, Bill Gates fame, right? Excuse me. Okay, so uh, check it out. Uh, you got it. Microsoft search engine applied Chinese style censorship to some North American searches, according to a new report, raising questions about the tech giant's dedication to the flow of information across the Internet. Hmm. Uh, Bing's autofill search system, which lists suggestions based on a word or the beginning and letters typed into a search box, failed to work with names and terms that the Chinese government is known to find politically sensitive. According to a new report from Citizen Lab, a public interest cybersecurity group, the organization found that in December last year, people prompting searches that would suggest connections to Chinese party leaders, dissidents, or other politically sensitive topics were regularly censored. Hmm. Yep. Microsoft acknowledged and reportedly fixed the issue. Oh, an oversight, of course, telling a reporter at the Wall Street Journal that it was a technical error that had caused people outside China to be affected by settings meant for that country. Oh, <laughs> quote, a small number of users may, may, users may have experienced a misconfiguration that prevented surfacing some valid auto-suggest terms. And we thank Citizen Lab for bringing this to our attention, a Microsoft spokesperson said, according to the Wall Street Journal. In a follow-up statement to see that a Microsoft spokeswoman added that the auto suggestions on Bing are largely based on the query itself. And so not seeing an auto suggestion does not mean it has been blocked. Oh, Mm -hmm. Uh, Citizen Lab contended that regardless of Microsoft's intention, the result harmed Internet use around the world. The findings in this report again demonstrate that an Internet platform cannot facilitate free speech for one demographic of its users while applying extensive political censorship against another demographic graphic of its users citizen labs lab researchers wrote and well yes (laughs) Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, the, the answer is yes. And this is what I'm saying, right? This is why, like, uh, again, uh, I know free speech is a very contentious issue and people are so scared of the things people might say, right? Oh, they're going to say racist things, right? Yeah, because people are stupid and people say stupid things, all right? But look, you cannot ban people from saying stupid things because, of course, you become the Nazi. You get it? You get it? That's what happens, right? You're supposed to allow people to say stupid things and make their own mistakes. And yes, there are some ugly things people do and say out there. But hey, isn't that what the law is for? 
Words are words, actions are actions, and they are two distinctly different things, okay? All right, all right, all right. 702-957-1037. Click the Discord link at troubleminds.org. We'll put you on the show. It's as easy as that. It's as easy as that. Uh, what's up? Hey, you in the, in the chat over there on Discord says, do robots need food? Hmm, that's a good question. All right, so what we're going to do is, uh, I think we're good, right? Let's see, time-wise, three, five, yeah, perfect. All right, so what we're going to do is take a quick break and get a word from our sponsor, which, of course, is you, and we'll be right back with more Trouble Minds news. And, of course, I'm Michael Strange. Be right back. Don't go anywhere. Are you digging the show? If so, you can support us quite easily and at no additional cost to you if you already have an Amazon Prime account. Since we stream on Twitch every day, all you have to do is link your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account, and they give you free games on a monthly basis for your personal use, and also a bonus $5 a month to send to your favorite streamer as a way to bring more people to Twitch. And all you have to do is sync up to two accounts and click subscribe. Thanks for considering us. All right, let us continue, shall we? Let's get back to uh, what we were doing. Now, let's go here. Speaking of China, yeah, now we're in business. Let's go to China, space China, space China. Uh, let's do this. Uh, the Zurong, uh, here we go. China's Mars rover is hibernating through the harsh red planet winter. Nice hibernations. Uh, we may have heard the last from China's Zurong for a while after the solar powered Mars rover entered a dormant state due to winter's cold and local. Uh, sand and dust storms. Uh, Zerong entered hibernation on May 18th with temperatures around minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit. That would be negative uh, 20 degrees Celsius during the local Mars day and minus 148 or 100 Celsius during the night, according to a statement from the Chinese Lunar Exploration Program. China's Tianwen-1 orbiter, which delivered Zurong to Mars last May, also detected sand and dust storm activity over Zurong's landing area in Utopia Planitia with its medium-resolution camera. How come they don't have high-resolution cameras, by the way? Uh, that pisses me off. Anyway, Zurong has a few tricks in its design to help it withstand the challenges of winter temperatures and sand and dust storms. These measures include the the ability to angle its solar panels to maximize sunlight collection and a special anti-dust coating on the panels, which, by the way, I, it was a curiosity. One of the rovers, uh, they say, is going to shut down forever because it's covered in Martian dust. So, hmm, uh, like you, you would expect, uh, I don't know, the thing to be able to just shake like a dog or something and just get that stuff out. Anyway, uh, China's rover is not alone in its plight. Oh, here it is. Uh, NASA's InSight lander, not Curiosity, InSight, which arrived on the Red Planet in November 2018, is also struggling to produce enough solar power to continue operations. In contrast, uh, NASA's Curiosity and Perseverance rovers can continue their journeys across the surface of Mars regardless of seasons since they are powered by radioisotope thermoelectric generators, a type of nuclear power. Well, there it is. <laughs> nuclear power. Uh, China's U-2 rovers on the moon are commanded to enter a dormant state for lunar nights, which last about 14 Earth days. However, the Zurong rover will be able to autonomously detect the improvement in solar energy levels and power up once more. According to Chinese officials, there it is. Well, I don't know. What do you think? Uh, is this? Uh, we've talked about this in the past. How um, there's there's this odd thing that happens when the Mars rovers get covered in dust, and some like one one one. <clears throat> One day they're actually uh, covered in dust, and the next day they're not. Like it, uh, like something's cleaning them off. I don't know. Anyway, uh, so uh, it's weird how it happens sometimes, but it doesn't happen other times. Anyway, you tell me. Seven zero two nine five seven one zero three seven. Click the Discord link at troubledminds.org. Let's continue, shall we? Have you guys heard of the scandal? Oh, the scandal. Mm hmm. The scandal is this: Elon Gate. You guys heard of this? Mm hmm. Uh, a ways back on Twitter, of course, uh, Elon Musk himself, the 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 actual uh, elephant in, in everybody's room, uh, he <laughs> said, if there's ever a scandal involving me, please call it Elongate. Get it? Elon Gates. All right. So anyway, well, uh, we've got our scandal. We've got Elon Gates, and uh, he's even calling it that himself. Now, listen to this. Uh, this is from Gizmodo, of course. And these uh, and I'm not saying there's no there's no basis. Right. There's always two, two sides to every story, all the rest of the stuff. But it certainly seems like this is a political hit piece. In my opinion, we'll see as more information comes out. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Elon actually is. Uh, now hiring a bunch of lawyers. He, he started tweeting recently in the last, uh, kind of, let's say, seven days or so. 
that he wants to get a high-powered legal team to do nothing but litigate uh, against people that are uh, BSing him. And, uh, you know, and, uh, uh, instead of just sit there and defend and just attack instead, right? Uh, but he also even made some commitments in that, uh, you know, he wasn't going to do it frivolously and it was going to be just. And even if they were going to lose, they wouldn't settle. And he made all kinds of different things, right? So it was pretty interesting that uh, his his take on this. But anyway, back to Elon Gate. That's right. Elon Gate. You got it. Uh, this is from Gizmodo. Elon Gates scandal cost Elon Musk $10 billion, $10 billion. Uh, Tech's most chaotic CEO saw about $10.6 billion of his personal wealth evaporate last Friday following a report on a settlement over alleged sexual misconduct, according to uh, estimates from the Bloomberg's Billionaires Index. Musk's drop in wealth as spotted by Insider was mainly due to the tanking of Tesla shares in the market. Though the world's richest man seems to evade consequences for most of his actions, even he succumbs to some financial consequences of scandal. Yeah, well, okay, on Friday, shares of, of the electronic car, the electric car maker lost as much as 10.8%, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the, here we go. This is, what, this is what Elon Gate is. The report of a, the $250,000 settlement published Thursday revealed that a SpaceX flight attendant alleged that in 2016, Musk exposed his erect penis to her after she gave him a massage propositions her her for sex by saying do more and said he would buy her a, a horse if she did <laughs> that's right a horse not a house a horse um musk has denied the reports claims and even joked about them christening the scandal elongate <laughs> elongate all in all tesla had a pretty rough week blah 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 yeah, anyway here you go uh here it is right here uh and uh, let's see, he, had, he added this. Here's the tweet. Looking for hardcore street fighters, non-white shoe lawyers like Perkins or Cooley who thrive on corruption, Musk tweeted on Friday. There will be blood uh, because he's tweeting for, um, let's see, in addition, Musk said Tesla was creating a hardcore litigation department reporting directly to him, you see. So uh, anyway, it, it says this. Uh, Please include links to cases you have tried. Looking for hardcore street fighters, not white shoe lawyers like Perkins or Cooley who thrive on corruption. There will be blood. And as, as if that weren't enough, a new documentary from New York Times on Tesla's autopilot system premiered on Friday, too. Titled Elon Musk's Crash Course, the film analyzes how Musk responded to accidents involving his car maker's autopilot system, which has been uh, a blah, blah, blah. It gets cut off. Anyway, okay, so there we go. We got Elon Gate, all right? Elon Gate. And uh, of course, of course. This is why you don't eat just before a stream. <laughs> Constantly. Uh, okay. Anyway, uh, so of course he, uh, of course, of course, the horse, of course, he he uh, said this on Twitter: um, the attacks against me should be viewed through a political lens. This is their standard despicable playbook, but nothing will deter me from fighting for a good future and your right to free speech. And there you go. So uh, he's he's basically saying that this is all horse shit. If we're going to stay on the horse meme for the moment, uh, and um, Elon Gates, uh, well, yeah, I'm, I'm sure he's not worried about losing ten billion because, well, he has many more billions beyond that. Then, of course, it's ten billion on paper, and there you go. There you go. Horse is a horse, of course, of course. And there it is. Uh, so the the attack against me should be viewed through a political lens. And again, uh, you see all the people coming out against Elon Musk and saying, oh, he's a Nazi and all this other stuff, right? I, I see the tweets on, on, on things. So here's, your, here's your daily reminder that Elon Musk donated to the Republican Party. Ha, ha, ha. Get him, guys. Get him. Yeah, like, it's so, it's so stupid. These people are so incredibly dumb that they, they literally cannot see their own ridiculousness in all of this right in all of this they're so brainwashed to believe that this is good and that is bad unequivocally that they just can't see how stupid they're being but uh what who might who might say who might know what do i know i don't know anything 702-957-1037 what do you think about elongate do you think they're after him do you think this is just more smear smear tactics or do you think uh, he actually offered to buy somebody a horse 
<laughs> I mean, that's a hell of a pickup line, isn't it? That's a hell of a pickup line. There you go. A new headline. What's up, Robert? Elon Musk living in his Tesla after losing $10 billion, right? Of course, of course, of course, because of a horse is a horse. Of course, of course. Let's continue, shall we? Let's go to uh, this. Oh, boy. All right. Uh, this is, uh, this is yes, uh, uh, CNBC.com. Here it is. Here it is. Yep, you got it. CDC officials sound alarm for gay and bisexual men as monkeypox spreads in community. All right. Can somebody explain to me? No, don't. Sorry. Don't. Let's not. Let's not explain to me. Uh, uh, Okay. here we go. Back to the good old CDC. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention on Monday alerted gay and bisexual men that monkeypox appears to be spreading in the community globally, cautioning people to take precautions if they've been in close contact with someone who may have the virus and to be on the lookout for symptoms. Dr. John Brooks, a CDC official, emphasized that anyone can contract monkeypox through close personal contact regardless of sexual orientation. However, Brooks said many of the people affected globally so far are men who identify as gay or bisexual. Though there may, be, may have been a greater chance of exposure to monkeypox right now, that doesn't mean the risk is limited only to the gay and bisexual community, he said. Quote, we want to help people make the best informed decisions to protect their health and the health of their community. Their, of their community. Can't say it from monkeypox, Brooks said. Monkeypox is not a, here you go, here you go. Exactly, here we go. Monkeypox is not a sexually transmitted disease, which are generally passed through semen or vaginal fluid, but it can be transmitted through sexual and intimate contact as well as through shared bedding. What the? It's not what I read yesterday. How come the definitions are changing? Shout out to, uh, who was that? Uh, was that Often Frozen? Who was that? that? Said that earlier in the thing. Let's see. Uh, no, that was, uh, somebody said that in the Discord last night. Look, they're already changing the definitions of these things. Because of course, right, this is what they have to do. Because the old definitions... Don't follow the new, uh, that was Cal, that was Cal, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, what's up Cal if you're out there, uh, posted uh, that they're changing the definitions of these things already uh, to fit with this uh, new narrative, right? And it used to be that you couldn't just get this stuff, it was, uh, it was yeah, yeah, <laughs> who warns to just stop <laughs> fucking monkeys, yes, indeed. Uh, so here you go. Uh, this is, yeah, the, the, the virus spreads through contact with body fluids and sores, all right? Body fluids and sores, okay? So, um what the hell's going on here? Like, this seems that uh, the definitions are changing and uh, changing with it didn't used to be a very uh, something that was, uh, let's say, easily uh, contractable. You had to really work at this, right? Because we're talking about literal bodily fluids and fluids from the sores on people, right? So anyway, here we go. Quote, anyone with a rash or lesion around or involving their genitals, their anus, or any other place they have not seen it before should be fully evaluated. Yeah, no shit. No shit. Uh, both for that rash, but for particularly for sexually transmitted infection and other illnesses that can cause rash. Yeah, no shit, Brooks has said. Uh, monkeypox usually begins with symptoms similar to the flu, including fever, headache, muscle aches, chills, exhaustion and swollen lymph nodes it then progresses to body rashes on the face hands feet eyes mouth or genitals that turn into raised bumps which then become blisters okay however the rashes appeared at first in some of the the, the most um, uh, the rashes appeared first in some of the recent reported cases according to dr jennifer mcquiston a cdc official while the virus has a long incubation period they're considered most infectious when they have a rash mcquiston said though monkeypox can spread through respiratory drugs Droplets. Oh, I didn't hear that yesterday. How come it's now that's the way it is today? The virus comes from infected lesions in the throat and mouth that can expel it into the air. Transmission from respiratory droplets requires prolonged face-to-face contact, according to the CDC. All right. So, uh, what what we have here is again. This seems to be a. I don't know. It seems to be a. Let's say I'm not going to say it. I know. I know you're thinking it. I'm not going to say it. Um. Okay, let's hope it's not what I think this is. 702-957-1037. Yeah, more social distancing, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it seems That seems to be a playbook is kind of what I was thinking. Uh, yeah, click the Discord link, troubleminds.org. We'll put you on the show. Uh, let's go to uh, this. And this is, again, this is another one, too. This is uh, this is literally in the last, like, 24 hours as well. This is from uh, the New York uh, New York Times, okay? The New York Slimes. And wouldn't you know it, uh, this is the truth here uh, of what's going on. Uh, remember? 
remember. Um, no, I'll, give, I'll give you my take on this in a moment, but um, let's read this. Yeah. Uh, why are sexually transmitted infections surging? Huh. After reaching historic lows more than a decade ago, rates are on the rise again. Okay, what the hell's going on here? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's see. Indeed, syphilis was nearly eradicated in the United States around 2000. Gonorrhea reached its lowest rates of infection in 2009. Many doctors who began practicing during that period haven't had experience diagnosing the ST- these STIs, uh, particularly in their female patients. According to Ina Park, a professor of family and community medicine at the University of California, San Francisco, quote, there's an entire generation of physicians and clinicians who had never seen syphilis in women and babies before. For. But of course, we have this. Uh, let's see. Uh, there were stunning increases, says Hillary Reno, an associate professor at the Washington uh, University School of Medicine and medical director of the St. Louis County Sexual Health Clinic. Quote, I can't tell you how many primary primary care physicians I have called that have called me recently and said, I just saw my first ever case of syphilis this year. Hmm. OK. All right. Uh, clearly, this is a significant problem. STIs can ir- ir- irrevocably, uh, irrevocably damage the reproductive system. At least 20,000 women are rendered infertile by untreated STIs in the United States each year. Syphilis can cause sores and rashes, and if untreated for decades, fatal damage to the brain, heart, and other organs. Okay, so what the hell's going on? What the hell's going on, right? we got the CDC saying, oh, uh, it's, it's, it's you know, gay and bisexual men monkeypox. Like, okay, wait, but it's not a sexually transmitted disease, right? But then we got in the same breath and like the same literally 24 hours, uh, why are sexually transmitted infections surging? What the hell is going on, people? Is this literally like a situation of um, uh, what would you say? Um, I don't know. Uh, casually eating ass. Is that what's going on? Everybody's eating ass like they're like they're making out. And as we said in that funny show a while back, you tell me, I don't know, 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. Remember the uh, advice from the last show. If you find a meat stick that looks, uh, let's say, appetizing and uh, it's got bumps and pus coming out of the bumps, refrain. <laughs> refrain this is troubled wines news i'm michael strange i'd uh, love to hear your thoughts on this and all the other things why is all this happening what the hell's actually going on and uh, it's, uh so yeah, there you go uh don't go anywhere more troubled minds on the way and be right back i'm gonna get a word from our sponsor which of course is you all right, let's keep on trucking. I'm Michael Strange. This is Trouble Minds News. Let's go to interesting engineering. Uh, speaking of uh, things and other things, and yeah, that was my bad joke from last time. I thought it was too good to leave out, so we had to add it this time. Uh, a, this is the headline. A patient is injected with a cancer-killing virus treatment for the first time. Oh, you mean they're actually creating laboratory viruses? I thought, I thought this, this, this wasn't a thing. Huh, weird. Uh, The trial will go on for two years. Listen to this. The City of Hope, one of the largest cancer treatment and research organizations in the U.S., announced in a press release that it had begun phase one of its clinical trial to use a modified virus to target advanced solid tumors. Modern science is using a wide range of tools at its disposal to solve the puzzle of cancer, from using drugs that selectively target cancerous cells to reprogramming the immune cells of the patient to fight off cancer. The researchers are using innovative mechanisms to reduce collateral damage and improve Improve patient outcomes. One oncolytic, a cancer killing virus, falls neatly in this category as well. Hmm. Yep, yep, you got it. Uh, a modified virus. Modified virus, right? There you go. <laughs> Robert's got it right. Keep your tongues out of the poop shoots. Uh, let's see. The technology aims... Uh, how does the treatment work? The technology aims to use the body's immune system to counter tumors. However, the presence of the tumor is an obvious sign that the immune system has failed to recognize the threat. So researchers aim to use a virus that will produce fragments that can flag cancerous cells to the immune system. To do this, the researchers modify a virus, in this case, a pox virus, and then use it to infect the patient. Once inside the host cell, the modified virus replicates and then blasts open the host cell to release thousands of new viral particles that go and attach themselves to the cancerous cells. These attachments serve as a flag for the host's immune system to attack the cancerous cells. The treatment being used in this trial has been developed by the Australian company Imugene. That sounds very dystopian, <laughs> Imugene, and is called CF33HNIS or Vaccinia. 
vaccinia. Hmm, weird. And curiouser and curiouser. The drug has been shown to be effective in shrinking colon, lung, breast, ovarian, and pancreatic tumors in laboratory tests and in animal models, the press release claims. All right. Eh, this is fine. This is fine. The HNIS in the drug stands for Human Sodium Iodide Transporter, a protein that the researchers will use to image and monitor viral replication as well as damage to the cancerous cells by using radioactive iodine. Science Alert reported. Mm -hmm. Uh, What will the trial entail? The phase one trial is aimed at determining that the drug is safe and will be administered to 100 volunteers across 10 sites in the U.S. and Australia. The volunteers will be cancer patients with a metastatic, wait, metastatic, there you go, or advanced solid tumors who have had at least two prior lines of cancer treatments. The experimental drug, Vaccinia, will either be injected intravenously or directly into the tumors, the press release said. While all volunteers will receive the drug, Once the safety of the drug has been demonstrated, certain individuals will also receive the pembrolizumab, whatever that is, an immunotherapy that has been documented to improve the immune system's capability to fight tumors. Anyway, uh, interesting, right? This is a uh, metastat, metastatastic. Yeah, there you go. There it is. Uh, in this case, uh, I don't know what's going on with this. Thank, thank God I don't know what's going on with this. It's not uh, uh, something that um, that uh, is, is in, in my... Uh, uh, in my life, right? Uh, you know, thank thank the heavens that uh, I don't know anybody that has uh, has cancer has had cancer. Uh, we, we've got a very lucky, um, very lucky uh, family history of that. So uh, you know, cross your fingers, knock on wood, all that good stuff. But uh, I mean, this is these are terms I'm not familiar with, and uh, thank goodness for that. But uh, otherwise, I mean, this. Uh, what do you think about uh, actually taking a virus? Uh, modifying it and then injecting it into people to uh, actually um, cure cancer or fight cancer. I mean, um, interesting, right? Interesting. Uh, so uh, you tell me, what do you think? 702-957-1037. Click the Discord link at TroubleMinds.org. Put you on the show. It's as easy as that. And uh, that's that. That's that. Let's keep on trucking, shall we? There's always more. Let's go to SciTech Daily. And uh, yeah, this is new. Uh, did you guys know this? I, I, I watched this very closely, but I, I kind of didn't even know this. Like, what's going on? NASA releases Moon to Mars Deep Space Exploration Objectives seeks public input. Did you know that NASA was trying to go to the moon and then to Mars? I thought that was just an Elon Musk thing, just making them look like clowns. But anyway... Straight from SciTech Daily, as NASA moves forward with plans to send astronauts to the moon as part of the Artemis missions to prepare for human exploration of Mars, the agency is inviting input from U.S. industry, academia, international communities, other stakeholders, and the public on its deep space exploration strategy and objectives. Uh, NASA released a draft set of high-level objectives on Tuesday, May 17th, 2022, identifying 50 points falling under four overarching categories of exploration, including transportation transportation and habitation, uh, moon and Mars infrastructure, operations and science. Comments are due to the agency by the close of business on Tuesday, May 31st. There you go. Rage, rage at them, guys. Let them have it. Uh, Quote, the feedback we receive on the objectives we have identified will inform our exploration plans at the moon and Mars for the next 20 years, said Deputy Administrator Pam Melroy. Uh, We're looking within NASA and to external stakeholders to help us fine-tune these objectives and be as transparent as possible throughout our process. With this approach, we will find potential gaps in our architecture as well as areas where our goals align with those from industry and international partners for future collaboration. Notice, right, we're talking about um, actual transparency, right? But uh, they're literally getting, uh, uh, let's see, uh, public input from, let's say, a meshes, mess- I can't say it, message board type system. And it, uh, they released it May 17th, and it's due by May 31st. Isn't that isn't that government transparency at its finest? Right, you get two weeks right to go over their things, to actually put it into think tanks and uh, offer them suggestions. That's government transparency for you. Uh, but if you want, you know, to get information out of that government machine, uh, we file a FOIA, wait for years. And uh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, you see what's going on. I mean, really, message board style, two week deadline. Get the Come on now. Anyway, and the feedback we receive on the objectives we have identified will inform our exploration plans on the moon and Mars for the next 20 years. So two weeks, message boards, 
you, you, you submit some things and it's going to inform their exploration plans for 20 years. Anybody, anybody confused? <laughs> I am. There you go. At this time, no formal, formal request for information or other procure, procurement activity is anticipated for this effort, which is managed by a team in the Exploration Systems Development Mission Directorate at NASA headquarters in Washington. Quote, these objectives will move us toward our first analog Mars mission with crew in space and prepare us for the first human mission to the surface of the Red Planet, said Jim Free, Associate Administrator for the Exploration Systems Development Mission Directorate. After reviewing feedback on the objectives, we will work with our partners to discuss input and finalize our framework this fall well you better think of something they haven't thought of yet because it might save their asses and you only got two weeks guys get after it <laughs> 702-957-1037 click the discord link at troubleminds.org let's go to uh, npr knpr the most trusted source in propaganda um, yeah um, an appeals court finds florida's social media law unconstitutional you guys heard of this ron desantis guy boy the, the, i'm told he's the devil <laughs> i'm told this man is the devil incarnate uh well mm, okay anyway a florida law intended to punish social media platforms such as facebook and twitter is an unconstitutional violation of the first amendment a federal appears court appear, appeals court ruled monday dealing a major victory to companies who had been accused by gop governor ron desantis of discriminating against conservative thought. A three-judge panel of the Atlanta-based 11th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals unanimously concluded that it was overreach for DeSantis and the Republican-led Florida legislature to tell the social media companies how to conduct their, conduct their work under the Constitution's free speech guarantee. You see? Yeah, goose and gander, right? So uh, while I agree, I agree that yes, yes indeed, uh, social media heavily um, Let's say, but again, remember it goes uh, to to both sides. They they heavily censor uh, super super uh, uh, liberal stuff. Like uh, if you go too far past what they like, you're censored, right? Because you're uh, dissident. If you go too far right, which in many cases uh, you don't have to go too far right at all, it's kind of the problem here is that they're censored as well. Okay, and that 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 barrier keeps keeps moving left and left and left, right? Of what they want to censor, so it, it becomes an issue. And he's right. Okay. However, do I believe that the government? Should should like step in and like maybe punish these companies maybe maybe i mean i don't think so in those terms i like i think uh, it's it's it is an overreach i think so but uh there's got to be some sort of um repercussions for these guys right because you, we get these echo chambers you see it like twitter and all the bots and all the bullying like i always say right it's okay to bully a particular person on twitter but not a particular other person on twitter you see it's like it's all based on these stupid political lines they draw and it's all just beyond I was going to say something I was going to regret. I, I won't say that. It's beyond... Anyway, um, an appeals court, uh, blah, blah. So, okay, th so they're going to shut this down. And I, I think, yes, this is the right move, the appeals court. Uh, the, uh, the ruling upholds a similar decision by Florida federal district law, judge on the law, which was signed by DeSantis in 2021. As part of an overall conservative effort to portray social media companies as generally liberal in outlook and hostile to ideas outside of that viewpoint, especially from the political right, which is completely... Yes, that's true. That is that is grotesquely true. Uh, quote, some of these massive, massive companies in Silicon Valley are exerting power over our population that really has no no precedent in American history, DeSantis said Monday on May 2021 in the bill signing ceremony. One of these major missions seems to be suppressing ideas. And this is true. This is completely true. So, uh, again, like I said, uh, you get into the lefty-righty stuff and you s instantly become a target because, right, you're not lefty enough, you're not righty enough, you're not centrist enough. You don't hate this guy. You hate that guy. I don't give a shit. I, I'm over it. I don't care. I don't care, right? The ideas are the most important thing. The legislation is the most important thing. I could give a damn what some knuckleheaded politician says because they say knucklehead stuff all day, every day. Get over it. Get over it. Sorry, that's just the way it is. Uh, look at the legislation. Look at the games they play to put through legislation with, uh, you know, dropping this 800-page bill with, oh, I don't know, uh, six hours to look it over before you got to vote on it type stuff. It's physically impossible to go through all of it, right? So they bury nitty-gritty bullshit details in there that you can't find because nobody can find it in six or eight hours, and then they have to vote on it. This is the type of shit that we should be furious about because this is not legislation. This is corruption 
on a let's say global scale because it doesn't just happen here it happens freaking everywhere and those are the things like i said the ideas and the manner in which they legislate are probably the two most important things that i can think of that we should be talking about and of course what are we talking about ron DeSantis is the devil come on no i doubt that I, I, there's no horns on the man uh, I don't know. 702-957-1037. Click the Discord link at TroubleMinds.org. Let's continue, shall we? Let's go to uh, Science Alert. ScienceAlert.com. Yep. Dot com. Uh, where are we at time-wise? Oh, perfect. Uh, in a, uh, this is a headline. Uh, in a wild twist, physicists have to revive an alternative theory of gravity. Yes, now we're talking. Uh, it all starts with dark matter. Or in this case, no dark matter. We talked about this actually with the walls in space, remember? Although most cosmologists agree that there's something out there called dark matter causing spiral galaxies to rotate faster than they should, even dark matter doesn't answer all the questions we need it to. So it's not a bad idea to look at some alternative options, you know, just in case. One alternative hypothesis to dark matter is the modified Newtonian dynamics or Milgromian dynamics framework. There you go. Say that three times fast. This hypothesis, first published in 1983 by physicist more D. High Milgram, suggests that we don't need dark matter to fill in the universe's gravity gaps if we calculate the gravitational forces experienced by stars in outer galactic regions in a different manner to how Newtonian laws suggest. To test this idea, which involves working with proportionality to the star's radius or centripetal acceleration, we need to be looking at the speeds of galaxies, specifically weird ones, like ultra-diffuse galaxies. Anyway, uh, there you go. There it is. Mm, I'm a space porn. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know what's going on with this other than, um, let's see. Let's see. Let's uh, let's get us some uh, some some uh, some new theories of uh, gravity. I, I want to know. Inquiring minds want to know. Seven zero two nine five seven one zero three seven. Let's get one more word from our sponsor, which of course is you, and then we'll keep on trucking with more more news and the CERN Large, Large Hadron Collider when we return. Uh, don't forget if you have uh, actually subbed up on um, Twitch uh, through Amazon Prime, it does expire each month, so you do have to uh, re up that. Uh, so keep an eye on that. I appreciate it very much, guys. Here we go. Let's get. One more word from our sponsor. and be right back. Trouble Lines News. I'm Michael Strange. Are you digging the show? If so, you can support us quite easily and at no additional cost to you if you already have an Amazon Prime account. Since we stream on Twitch every day, all you have to do is link your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account, and they give you free games on a monthly basis for your personal use, and also a bonus $5 a month to send to your favorite streamer as a way to bring more people to Twitch. And all you have to do is sync up to two accounts and click subscribe. Thanks for considering us. All right, let's do it. Let's keep on trucking. There's more. One final segment of Trouble Minds News. Let's go to space.com. Uh, space.com. One of my favorites. At least it's not CNN-ish. CNN-ish. It's just a little better. Uh, what's up? This is a Large Hadron Collider finds new way to measure mass of a quark from three hours ago. Hot off the press. Yep. Uh, The ALICE experiment of the Large Hadron Collider has, for the first time, directly measured a phenomenon known as the dead cone, which has allowed physicists to directly measure the mass of a fundamental particle known as a charm quark. Many particles that form the visible universe around us are actually composite particles built from less massive fundamental particles known as quarks. Protons and neutrons, for example, contain three quarks each. There are six different flavors of quark, up, down, top, bottom, strange, and charm. That's very different from up, up, down, down, left, right, be a select start, just uh, don't get too confused, which each have different masses, spins, and other quantum properties. That's up, down, top, bottom, strange, and charm. Different combinations of quarks also form different particles. The quarks are held together in these composite particles by the strong force, which is transmitted by a massless particle called a gluon. Oh, yeah. Collectively, quarks, quarks and gluons are known as partons. Oh, boy. Oh boy. Anyway, uh, we got new stuff going on. Uh, as you know, they fired up uh, CERN, and we're going to keep an eye on this, and hopefully we don't get a ca- catastrophic vacuum decay that gobbles up the entire 
Galaxy. That would be really nice. Let's go to uh, thehill.com at 702-957-1037. I love, uh, I love Lucky Charms Quarks for breakfast. <laughs> there you go. There we go. We're going back to this. Um, you guys remember this Cambridge Analytica? All the uh, BS from the last election and the last two elections? Yeah, well, here we go. D.C. sues Zuckerberg over Cambridge Analytica breach. And this is, again, a perfect example of uh, these knuckleheads saying, oh, it's fine, you know, it's fine if these guys play dirty, but if the other guys play dirty, we're going to get mad. We're going to be so mad. You can't play dirty. We're the ones playing dirty. Anyway, Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg is targeted in a lawsuit filed by D.C. Attorney General Carl Racine, a Democrat, Monday over allegations that he directly participated in decision making that led to the Cambridge Analytica data breach. Yeah, no shit. Yeah, no shit. Uh, the, the lawsuit comes amid Racine's ongoing case against Facebook, now under the parent company named Meta, filed in 2018 over the breach. The new lawsuit characterizes Zuckerberg as more than a figurehead at Facebook. Yeah, no shit. Uh, who is personally involved in nearly every major decision the company makes. Yeah, no shit. You think he's just, you know, an alien sitting there in his, like, alien suit? No. Uh, speaking of suit, the suit alleges that in that role, Zuckerberg was directly involved in decisions that led to third-party Cambridge Analytica to get personal data of users in the lead-up to the 2016 election. Racine attempted to add Zuckerberg to the initial suit filed against the company, but in March, a judge rejected the request, arguing Racine had waited too long. Racine's office has said the decision to file a new lawsuit against Zuckerberg is based on a review of hundreds of, th- or hundreds of thousands of documents produced during the ongoing case against Facebook, as well as depositions from Facebook's directors, former employees, employees and whistleblowers, according to the attorney general's announcement. Quote, the evidence shows Mr. Zuckerberg was personally involved in Facebook's failure to protect the privacy and data of its users, leading directly to the Cambridge Analytica incident, Racine said in a statement. And there you go. Uh, Is anybody shocked? I'm not. (laughs) <laughs> I'm totally not. Let's go to uh, fizz.org, one of my favorites. And uh, yeah, there we are. Let's do this. One step closer to making terahertz technology usable in the real world. Uh, remember terahertz? You guys remember terahertz? Arts parts blasting the uh, the magnesium, what was it? Magnesium bismuth layers uh, with terahertz technology is supposed to reduce mass. You remember this? Hmm. Well, one step closer to making terahertz technology usable in the real world. So Tom DeLong, where's our flying car? This is horseshit. Anyway, researchers have discovered in two-dimensional uh, conductive systems a new effect that promises improved performance of terahertz terahertz detectors a team of scientists from cavendish laboratory together with colleagues at the university of augsburg germany and lancaster has found a new physical effect when two-dimensional electron systems are exposed to terahertz waves tell me they lose mass and float please 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 uh, researchers from the semiconductor physics group together with researchers from pisa and torino in italy were the first to, to demonstrate in 2002 the operation of a laser at terahertz frequencies a quantum cascade laser since and the group has continued to research terahertz physics and technology and currently investigates and develops functional terahertz devices incorporating metamaterials to form modulators as well as new types of detectors. Hmm. Okay, interesting. Wait, so we have metamaterials, which is literally what they've used in terms of uh, UFOs, metamaterials, um, but they're building modulators and detectors. Where's the flying cars, people? Okay, anyway, what is the recent discovery about? Quote, we were developing a new type of terahertz detector, said Dr. Wad, oh my goodness, Wadislaw Mikhailo, yeah, junior research fellow at Trinity College, Cambridge. But when measuring its performance, it turned out that it showed a much stronger signal than should be theoretically expected. So we came up with a new explanation. Anyway, I don't know what the hell's going on with this. Terahertz, arts parts, UFOs. I don't know, dude. <laughs> 702-957-1037. Speaking of I don't know, dude, what in the world is going on? What's up, Robert? Terahertz are only good for communicating with the dead, right? What's up, APOC? APOC knows. What's up? <laughs> the 
the flying cars. All right, here you go. This is from uh, CNBC. Uh, let, the, the, let the bloodbath continue. Uh, this is, yeah, yeah, Bitcoin could fall to $8,000, $8, a more than 70% plunge. Uh, Guggenheim's Minard, my, Minard says, who the hell is this? Who, the hell, who are these people? Uh, in any case, Bitcoin could drop further and fall to 8000 from its current levels. A Guggenheim chief, blah, blah, that guy. That, that would represent more than 70% drop of Monday morning's price of just over 30000 When you break below 30000 consistently $8,000 is the ultimate bottom. So I think we have a lot more room to the downside, especially with the Fed being restrictive. Miner told CNBC's Andrew Ross Sorkin in a Squawk Box interview. These, that's, these guys are just Squawk Box and um, blah, blah. Minard is referring to the U.S. Federal Reserve's hiking of interest rates and tightening the monetary policy. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. The talking heads, the talking heads. The talking heads will talk, and talking heads will talk. Yeah, my money porn. There it is, the money porn. Um, this guy, hmm, I won't pick on the guy. Okay, uh, what do you guys think? Uh, what's going on? Let's see. How about this? Now we're talking. Back to CNN, the most trusted source of news. Yeah, there we go. We got this. Scientists have unlocked the vitamin D potential of tomatoes. Study says, huh. yeah, uh, yep, uh, blah, 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 blah. Now, a team of researchers have come up with a potential new and vegan source of vitamin D. Tomatoes gene edited using CRISPR-Cas9 technology to contain a precursor to vitamin D. If the process is adopted commercially by farmers and producers, these tomatoes could help address vitamin D insufficiency, which the study said affects 1 billion people globally. Quote, this exciting discovery not only improves human health, but contributes to the environmental benefits associated with more plant-based diets, often linked with a challenge in securing some key vitamins and minerals widely found and bioavailable in animal products. Guy Poppy, a professor of ecology at the University of Southampton, told the Science Media Center in London he wasn't involved in the research. Okay, all right. Uh, vitamin D supplements are widely available in many countries, but co-author Kathy Martin, a professor at the John Eines Center in Norwich, England, said that eating a tomato was so much better than taking a pill. Yeah. And, uh, quote, I think uh, having a dietary source of vitamin D in the form of a plant also means you can get added benefit from eating tomatoes. We don't eat enough fruit and veg. Uh, uh, veg it says veg anyway. Uh, yes, uh, vegetables anyway. A tomato is a good source of vitamin C as well, she said at a news briefing. Uh, the study published Monday in the scientific journal Nature Plants. And there you go. So um, what do you think? Do you think we should just like eat uh, eat? Uh, uh, <laughs> eat, eat, just eat more fruits and vegetables, or do you think we should uh, have them modify the tomatoes so that uh, a tomato is indeed not a tomato anymore? Because, well, once you CRISPR Cas9 it, well, it becomes mutant potato or tomato, as the case may be. 702 957 1037. Click the Discord link, troubleminds.org. Uh, let's go to our, our final story, shall we? Let's do it. I know, bittersweet. The end. The end is so wrong. Uh, let's go to uh, Twisted Sifter. Yep. Yep. This is wild. What we can learn about human consciousness from a man missing most of his brain. Uh-oh. Mutato. <laughs> What's up, Bernays? It's fine. This is fine. <laughs> now, since since he had, uh, in 2007, a man in his mid-40s walked into a clinic in, Fran in France complaining of a pain in his leg. Since he'd had similar complaints as a child that had turned out to be linked to uh, cerebrospinal fluid leaching into his uh, brain ventricles, ouch, doctors decided to do a scan to see if that could be the culprit again. They were stunned to find out that not only was his brain full of fluid, but the ventricles were so swollen that they had replaced virtually everything in his brain except for a thin layer of neurons. The man suffered no other ill effects. He was working full time, helping to support his wife and two children and functioning, it would seem, with far fewer working brain regions than was previously thought possible to retain consciousness. WTF? Now, for example, scientists believe the thalamus relays sensory uh, signals to the cerebral cortex, which neuroscientists previously would have said was indispensable for consciousness. 
Research on coma patients with major damage in that area has led to that conclusion, as well as scientists' ability to switch off consciousness by stimulating that brain region in epileptic epileptic patients. Similar beliefs have arisen about the brain region known as the claustrum after like experiments and manipulation. The two areas communicate extensively. Okay, so what's going on with this? Uh, so many in the field have linked consciousness to the brain's structure, while others have long thought it was due simply to how neurons communicate. But in this one case, it seems to lend support to the latter, less widely accepted theory due to how neurons communicate. A recent study uh, examined the patterns of neural activity to take place when we're forming thoughts and found that neurons rarely use the most direct route of communication. Instead, they go through many different connections and channels before producing the that highly complex impulse. And there you go. There's... there. How, how, how the hell? How the hell? How does consciousness continue when this most of this guy's brain had uh, basically shut itself down? Crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. Uh, what's going on? What's going on, guys? I hope everybody's well tonight. Uh, happy Monday to you. The bad news is we're done. The good news is, God willing, we've got tonight and tomorrow. So uh, we'll be back with more Trouble Minds coming up at approximately 7 p.m. Pacific time. And uh, what what's it about? I don't know yet. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm the uh, procrastinator extraordinaire, and uh, I'll come up with something, and we'll talk about uh, some fun stuff. So uh, we'll catch you then. Again, if you want to help the show, there are a number of ways you can do that, and uh, it's, it is simple. You can spread the word. That's the easiest way. You can beat the algorithms with old school word of mouth. There's a conversation going on that's not very political. It's uh, kind of trying to dodge that as much as possible, and uh, it, tur- it seems like there's a whole bunch of BS going on here. Let's see. I click the thing. It pops the thing up. The chicken that lived for 18 months without a head what the <laughs> dear god all right well there it is <laughs> there it is i guess what's up Bernays? all right i'll check the story all right so uh so that's what's going on i hope everybody's well uh, spread the word uh, let them know there's a conversation going on that uh it's not not as political bs as everything else out there and uh yeah yeah uh let's play the outro music and smash the thing and do the things and do the things and like this there we go so as you know, uh, like I said, uh, there are a number of ways you can actually sub up on Twitch here. You can do it through Amazon Prime at no additional cost. You can also sub up on, if you want to help the show, you can sub up on uh, Rockfin directly or, of course, uh, Patreon and get the bonus content of uh, Troubled Minds on Demand. There's uh, quite, a, quite a lot of stuff up there at this point, uh, which also gets uh, ported over to Discord if you're uh, a subscriber there. You can access it there. All kinds of different stuff, all kinds of great things. And uh, if you want to help the show another way and uh, spend some money and get some sweet stuff, some sweet swag, you got, uh, there you go, this hat, uh, trouble, troublefans.com, troublefans.com. You can uh, find uh, the merch. There's T-shirts. Oh, I got a shirt. I got a black shirt, but like the black print. Oh, it's sweet. I'll, I'll, I'll pull it out for tonight. I'll wear it tonight. And uh, there's, some, there's some sweet, sweet, sweet stuff up there. Uh, check it out, troubledfans.com, and you can get uh, hats, shirts, stickers, up there, the patches up there. I got the patch as well. I'll show you guys that on the stream tonight. Anyway, uh, that's, the, that's the one way. If you don't want to spend money, and you want to help uh, just listen to the podcast feed uh, it's it is 400 and how many up there my goodness 418 now 418 episodes 419 I can't even keep up and uh, if you listen to uh, an old episode that you haven't heard or listened to before uh, it's uh, or maybe listen to one of your old favorites uh, it's monetized and uh, it will send me a few cents every time you do that so so uh, there you go the easy ways to help and you don't have to spend money and uh, there you go appreciate you all very much thanks for being enthusiastic and loving the show Thanks for being in the chat and saying hi, and thanks for uh, keeping up. Thanks for doing your best to keep up with uh, a horse is a horse, of course, of course, and no one can then say you're a horse like Elon Musk. All right, let's get the hell out of here. You guys are the best. Have a fantastic one. Uh, there you go. Fabric is quality. The hat is quality made. There it is. There it is, as Robert says. And if the Robert says it, it is. It is. All right, have a great one, guys. We'll see you tonight with more Troubled Minds Radio. See you then.